Hi, Marty. The convention went quickly and efficiently. Thank you. Nice job. Well, that's a good compliment. Thank you. Hi, Glenda Noble. Glenda's muted. <laughs> no. Now I'm not. Not for long. <laughs> what lake are you with, Glenda? What link am I with? League, League of Women Voters, local. Eastern Carver. Oh, okay. Same as Laura. What was the problem in getting online here? Had I didn't, we were supposed to start at 1130. Um, for the, these breakout rooms? Um, for your program here. Yes. Yeah, so this is just going to be a conversation, just sort of a breakout room, uh, sort of a lunchtime conversation about with league presidents, and you're welcome to sit in too. Uh, I think we were going to start at 1145. So if you'd been waiting for a while, that's what the holdup was. Ah, okay, because I have been since 1130. I was just <laughs> about to you know, go to something else. So we went long in the, uh, in the convention, we had a last minute motion that was brought forward so it took us a few minutes to talk about that well i joined here because i'm kind of interested in what's going on down on the floor <laughs> <laughs> all right laura will this be uh recorded and available afterwards it is being recorded yes Anna. okay i think i i have to leave um uh but um, it, I, I'll, I'll have to leave before the um, it's ended. And um, 
sorry, I don't know. Is this a, a sharing kind of thing or ideas? It's, or? Yep, it's really meant to be sharing. I don't even have an official agenda put together for today. I just thought we would chat a little bit. I don't know that it will go all the way till one o'clock. It sort of depends on how big our group is. This just gives an opportunity for um, league presidents to meet each other and um, anyone else really who wanted to sit in and sort of hear the president chat. Um, just to sort of see what's going on in our local leagues, what you're most excited about, uh, that kind of, what you're most uh, apprehensive about maybe, um, that kind of thing. Um, thanks for uh, the state uh, putting it on so condensed, you know, uh, the, the convention, that was really nicely done. Well, good. That was really a challenge to con condense what normally is at least 12 hours of business, uh, really cut it in half down to a sort of six. So it had the feel to me of rushing through some things, but uh, as long as people got some good points out of it and know that they can go back afterwards and look at all the slides again and get all that information in a more extended version, I think, I hope that that will be helpful to people. Um, our original intent was, I know the slides were set up with a whole bunch of links back to the website and wouldn't it be neat if we could click on the link and show everybody. Uh, we quickly realized that added a lot of time and screen changes. So um, everybody's on their own to click on links later on and hopefully that'll be helpful. One question I have is when they were doing the update of the bylaws to uh, be consistent with the uh, US bylaws, there was um, uh, a form that was shown, or not a form, but the bylaws with the uh, proposed changes. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I looked at the, the current bylaws and then the report from the bylaws committee, but I didn't see that same, uh, pre how it was presented with it, with it in the there. With yeah, the mock-up. Mock that would be great if I could get that. Okay, let me we need to do that for our league. And honestly, as we looked at these bylaws changes, we realized that there could have potentially been a round of changes that didn't trickle down and get reflected in local league bylaws. So that's another intent of ours during this next year is to um, probably form another task force or committee just for bylaws to work with local leagues on making sure their bylaws are in order. Um, this spring when several of the local leagues had their annual meetings and some submitted their bylaws changes to us, we and then when we looked at them, we realized there were some things that were out of conformance, but they had already been passed through the local league meeting. So our our idea was let's spend some time during the next year so that at next year's annual meetings, local leagues can really get their bylaws shaped up. And hopefully it's not, doesn't mean a lot of work. It just means some language conformity is really what it's about. So we, you, so just kind of wait. So you're, are you telling me, um, um, I want to make sure I get this correct, to just kind of wait until you at the state well, did you already have your annual meeting this year? We already Anna? had our annual meeting, and I knew that I knew that there was talk about additional bylaws. We had just changed our bylaws with the age sixteen um, in November, and um, and so uh, I know that some of the leagues were changing their bylaws, but some were not. So I decided to wait um, because it was kind of I needed a break. <laughs> yeah. And what we didn't want to do is cause a lot of stress for local leagues who just because we're still in that transition time where there's a lot of virtual things going on, not meeting in person. There's so many things to think about. Or like if a league spent time on their bylaws and passed them this year, let's let that be until sort of the next opportunity. And so you're in a good place in the cycle, Anna, if you're already past your annual meeting, you won't have the next opportunity to really amend your bylaws until your next annual meeting anyhow. And okay. so um, what we wanna do is just make sure that all the information is out there so that local leagues know what their conforming language is supposed to be and can kind of verify that, um, that they're, that's where they're at. And you, but, you'll have some kind of a meeting or some kind of uh, something that gets us there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think another thing to add to your to do list. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's the never ending to do list. So um, let's take a second, Gretchen. I see your hand is raised, um, but okay. let's. Oh, I'm not sure anybody. 
Oh, here comes one more person. Um, let's just take one minute to just sort of go around the room and introduce ourselves and what league we're with. And um, if you're a returning president or a new president, or if you're not even a president, but you're just are interested in what the presidents have to say. Um, so uh, I'll just call on people as we uh, go around this, uh, how I see you on my screen. So Gretchen, can you be first, please? Yeah, I'm with LWB ABC, which is Anoka Blaine Coon Rapids up here in the North Metro. I'm also with uh, Upper Mississippi ILO. So that's what I wanted to talk about was bylaws. Okay, uh, Marty. I'm with Golden Valley League, and um, I also want to thank a few of the leagues for their work in helping us with the firearm study in interviewing their local police chiefs and interviewing their local sheriffs. Um, ABC League, you were one of the star performers of our league, so thank you so much. And uh, Deb Brinkman, St. Louis Park, also participated. And I don't think the... Anna, you're Ro Rochester, right? Rochester, yes. Yeah, we never got a response from you guys. So it was like, oh, I, you probably were busy. We probably should have mentioned that at convention, Marty, that um, just an update on the, not, not a full update, but just sort of a sentence that you'll see it again. You'll see it come before everybody at council in 2022. Right, uh, we were supposed to have a workshop and then it was got dropped. So uh, we were- oh, Sorry. Yeah, but we'll have one in August, hopefully. I think that'll be great, even have that separate away from convention. And you're doing really great work with that. And I think uh, COVID has extended your work uh, in some ways. It, it made it harder. But um, I think, um, Gretchen, did your league find that it was helpful interviewing the local police? Or did they find that to be just a, a burden? No, they uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, they had a lot of volunteers and people were happy to do the work. Yeah, we had really good uh, responses from those the leagues that did it, and mm -hmm. I'm sorry that other leagues, you know, weren't able um, to find the time. But um, hopefully, you know, it gives you a springboard for a conversation. All right, all right, and Glenda Noble. Uh, yes, I am Eastern Carver County League, same as Laura. I'm very proud of Laura, and I'm here as an observer and to keep track of her. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> I haven't seen her in so long. I, I just, it's really nice to just be a part of the observing here and listening, seeing what's going on. There was a league, I think it was a league in Northfield that was doing a lot of this uh, interviewing of police and going over their policies. Has anyone heard about that? They have the study published on the internet, on, on their website. And mm -hmm. I think um, Adrian, Falcone did a workshop, I believe, on Thursday evening on that very topic. I don't know if anyone in this group attended that workshop. Gretchen did, sounds like. Um, you, you did not attend that workshop, Glenda? I have not been a part of the convention. I've just been popping in and observing, and I'm just so interested in what's going on. I can't do a whole lot anymore, but I'm just still interested in what's going on in this um, a police um, a problem that we have with the militarization of our police forces across the United States has bothered me a lot. So and is I, that is that study on the Northfield website? Yes. I did not go into the Northfield website, and I'm sorry, I don't remember where I saw it, but I would just note that they were doing a very thorough job of interviewing, and some of the police departments in the police department were very receptive, and there were others that were absolutely not receptive. So, is there, uh, Anna, was it you that said that that study was online? I didn't, I don't know. It was oh. Marty who said it. Oh, Marty, is that where it's is that where it's at? Is on the Northfield Cannon Falls? Yeah, yeah. Local website. I, I think it was at least I I downloaded it and printed it up. All um, right, not that many pages. So you might be able to um, find their local website then, Glenda, and find the their report there. Uh, all right, Anna. Uh, Anna Ferling, uh, Rochester, and a quick question about the police. Um, uh, interviews. Do they include the county too, like the sheriff's yep. departments? Okay. Gretchen and Becky. 
Becky LaPlante Brainerd. Or, uh, yeah, sorry, I did not fill out that police. <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I have a tendency to forget to check that email. And by the time I saw it, I just didn't have time. But I know our police would have been very receptive. Um, Is, so it too I apologize. Late? Is it too late, Marty? Or will you be circling back again to see? To get... <laughs> I also, I'm swamped. I will go crazy. It's been on the spreadsheet. I finally did the last you know, percentages, <laughs> have my rough draft of the report. And no, I don't want to change one thing up. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I didn't mean to open that up for you. But I mean, it would have been wonderful the, the more, but you know, it, it more than anything, it just gives us a sense of what the police are concerned about and any laws relating to firearms that might limit firearms. And in some cases, they're uh, in favor of some limitations that mm -hmm. I didn't, I was not aware of. Um, and there's a lot of diversity among the police. Yeah, you find that a lot of them are not very comfortable with everybody having guns. Yeah. Some are not, and they do not want armor piercing bullets, no. Mm. All right, oh, Zoe, yeah. can you say hello and let us know what league you're with? Hi, my name is Zoe Malinchak and I am a part of the Red Wing League, and uh, I am here at Fair Trade Books, <laughs> my business in Red Wing, Minnesota. Hi. And Zoe, are you currently president of that league or co-president? I am the newly uh, elected president. Uh, Tina Langton is the outgoing president. We are actively searching for a co-president. All right. And Deb, are you able to say hello and let us know your league and what your status as president is? Hey everyone. Yep, I am from St. Louis Park and I'm the current president. I've been the president for several years, um, keep hoping that somebody else is gonna step up, but um, we tend to have a very active group and they keep me pretty busy and they're so inspiring. So that's always um, good to hear. So, yeah. All right, thanks, Devin. It looks like you're in a nice outdoor location. Yeah, so nice out today. I know. I know. Well, we'll have a good bit of the day yet to get outdoors if we want to. So go ahead, Marty. Yeah, um, I have a question for Deb. Um, one of the programs that our league wants to hold this fall is an informational program on ranked choice voting. And I was just curious, uh, I suspect you might be a speaker in favor of that. Yes, I love ranked choice voting. Okay, and then we'll, and then, but we also need a speaker opposed to it because we, you know, we don't have a position on it. We want to make sure that we have both sides, but uh, it is something that we are looking at, so. Great, and then are you also going to, I'm sure you'll reach out to Jean Massey, a fair vote. I thank you for her name. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's, um, she was a very good partner for us. Okay. As we, um, as, as we adopted ranked choice voting, she was, it was very good, very good partnership. Are other um, groups on even year elections for their local um, nonpartisan positions like county commissioner and school board and all city councils? Can you repeat that question? I was just wondering because our league is one of the few now I think of cities that we have we vote in the odd years for our local elections. Um, and I was wondering if it's a, a trend where everyone's wanting to go to even years for everything. Or is it just a few people in Hennepin, uh, just the cities in Hennepin County? Yes, I, I don't know the answer to that. Jean would probably be a good resource. She keeps very close track of what everybody's doing. Okay, thank you. And I don't know if it's a trend, Marty. I think we have um, in our local leagues, you know, we got a number of applications for the Martin Brown grant this year. Uh, we got 13 and I would say um, the majority of those had city elections this year in addition to school board. But then I'm guessing the ones that we didn't, you know, the leagues that we didn't get any applications for probably are not having any elections this year. Right. Thank you. And Marty, uh, are, is you know, the city you're from, is that a charter city? It's, no, it's not. Golden Valley is a statutory B city. And that, that presents a problem That's with true. ranked choice voting, because I think they have to go through the legislature to get the uh, okay Yeah. to do but that. It, right. Yeah, but I mean, not that it's not, uh, you can't overcome that, but. No. 
so Jean Massey has contacted uh, the State League. Um, it was during this last legislative session about the ranked choice voting um, legislation that's working its way through the legislature. And she knew that there wasn't gonna be a vote on it this year, but anticipates that there will be next year. So um, we have a plan for her to first come in and speak to our state board and really make sure that we're all uh, educated on what we need to know so that when then we can have conversations and pass that on to local leagues. She'd really like us to be uh, a supporter with a lot with her of this legislation. She thinks it's going to pass next year and um, she thinks and I agree that it might be a shame if uh, the League of Women Voters isn't part of that important uh, voting conversation. Do you have anything to add to that, Deb? Um, I, I agree. I think the League of Women Voters should be included in that conversation. Obviously, I, I, we've got the position um, in our League of Women Voters Minnesota um, program. So that has been very helpful. And then I also used, um, as we were doing our advocate, advocating, um, I also used the study um, from 2014, because I mean, really not that much has changed, right? And then I also used a lot of information from the League of Women Voters of Maine. So, but I definitely um, believe that um, the League of Women Voters should be part of this discussion. I actually, as leagues are getting more engaged and getting more educated, I think that this is another opportunity where we could be getting our schools much more engaged. Um, the, the, the kids or young people, um, they like get it. They're just like, but of course, I mean, what, you know, why wouldn't you do this? And so, but I think um, there's an opportunity even to kind of drive some of this um, from our children as well. Wouldn't it be cool if they use ranked choice voting for their student government um, elections? So I think there's lots of opportunities there. What study and, do you, are you referring to from 2014? Um, they studied- uh, um, a, Which organization? It was um, voting, alternative voting solutions, I think is what it was called. I can send, I'll send it to you. Was it our study? I mean, cause we had a position on that. And in fact, one of the positions was that we support the option for local leagues or local uh, municip municipalities to determine whether they would have ranked choice voting or another alternative form of voting. Uh, also, when you look at the LWVUS position on this, it's uh, ours as a, um, as at the state is really kind of generic, and the LWV I think just changed, just uh, amended or changed the wording in their position at the last convention um, to be much more specific about different types of voting and what what it is we support and promote. So that's something uh, we should be looking at at the state yeah. in terms Good of. Good point copying what the US uh, position might be as well. And it looks like we're having one more person join us, Rob Schumer. Um, Gretchen, you had something that you wanted to bring up about bylaws. Oh yeah, um, so I need to leave about 12.30. So um, as the ILO, um, Upper Mississippi ILO, we work in four different states and it seems like they're all having their state conventions this weekend. In Illinois, there's a large bylaws battle over allowing ILOs to have a vote. Um, according to the LWV US convention, um, each ILO gets one vote at convention, one delegate, one vote. Um, Minnesota does not allow this. Illinois did allow it and they're taking it out. And, um, and so I would urge Minnesota to conform to national and allow us to have a vote. And then, um, you know, I just let you know that that's happening in Illinois. All right. Is there anything, any kind of action or um, what, what kind well, of thought should we be giving this? Well, we'll know more after we see how things go in Illinois. And I didn't realize that we didn't allow a vote until I was working with the Illinois people over the weekend on trying to figure out what, what our bylaws said, so. Mm -hmm. All right. I have your bylaws right here and I just, that's why I kind of lost track of what you're saying, Gretchen, because I was looking up your bylaws. I have it right yeah. here. 
Was it, what was the question or comment you had on? It's the, not in uh, our bylaws, it's in the state Minnesota bylaws. Yeah. ILOs are not allowed a vote. You know, we don't get to send a delegate to convention. Oh, okay. And so we have two ILOs here that would be affected by that. All right, something to consider then in case we need to make a change at uh, council next year. And Rob Schumer, it looks like you've joined us, welcome. So we're re it's really just a free flowing conversation sort of um, what you're most uh, excited about maybe in the next year or so, or in the next few months that your league might be doing or what you have questions or concerns about, um, things that you might want, think other local leagues might be able to help you noodle through. Um, our league is not a 501c3 yet, and we're going to be working on that. Did anyone have any, e I mean, we did contact Bridget and we have a packet of things to do. And so I'm just curious, is this process going to be difficult or have you found it to be easy enough uh, if you just show your treasurer's reports? I think now it's been a few years for our Eastern Carver County League. Um, but if I recall back, I was president of the local league when we did that. It's a pretty um, well laid out step-by-step -step kind of a thing. So in that regard, it felt pretty easy. There's some information that you need to gather and um, steps you need to take to uh, close out some things, but so it takes a little bit of time, but otherwise I, th I hope, I think, and I hope you'll find it uh, easy. Yeah, okay, thank you. Look, that'll be a great move. To become yeah, part of the CMAL final. has to do that too, <laughs> you know, and they had a problem with losing treasurers, so then they were losing, you know, some important documents, which was right. a problem. Who made the comment? I think it was Deb that you're you're still president. You're president again, and you're hoping that someone will step forward. And I think that's a concern that we hear from many local leagues. I don't, I don't, I can't identify a, a local league that has. Um, conquered that process, um, we'd certainly would, uh, one of the things that we would hope to do in the next year or so is um, help develop the, um, that leadership pipeline so that we end up having more people that are willing to step forward. And maybe one of the things we do is try to make it seem like not such a daunting task to be president of your local league. I think there are some organizations that sort of just have it institutionalized that people rotate through, just people just take a turn and they, it's your turn to be chair for a couple of years. So I think that has something to do with how we describe what the position is. And although in each of our local leagues, people do tend to make these positions kind of their own and take on uh, what they want to take on. So sometimes that can have the effect of um, intimidating someone who might want to step into those shoes. I'd be interested to hear um, sort of your thoughts on kind of that leadership development and um, what, we, what we might do better to help facilitate those leadership changes. Gretchen? Um, again, be, it's been really interesting working with the ILO because I get the exposure to lots of different leagues in different states. And this is a problem in a lot of places. And so when we were writing our first bylaws, we put term limits in. So a president can only serve for two terms, two two-year terms. And then we set up a succession that the vice chair, vice president generally would assume the presidency, serve for one or two terms, and then they stay on the board as a, a past president. Mm -hmm. And so that way you have continuity, but you ensure that there's always different people getting ready for that seat. And so far it's worked. We've only been around since 2015, so not exactly tested yet, but, but because it was institutionalized that way, everybody kind of knows what to expect. Is any, anyone aware of one of our local leagues who has instituted sort of that sort of setup and had it work? I, I mean, because I think that is the way to go. At our local league, when um, like when I did step down, there are a couple different times when I did step down and nobody stepped up. And so what they did is they just rotated the, the, the meeting and the agenda. 
So, and, and that's happened before. When I went back and looked, there was, we've had several times when we've had no president. And so they just kind of rotate the, the duties. Becky, I think you said, I think you wrote in the chat, you seconded that. Um, what are the, or you know the feeling. What are the challenges that you've seen or any kinds of possible solutions that you might have thought of? Talked about um, just not really having a president and um, pretty much meeting as a group, but nothing came of that. So um, I think I'm just president for life. <laughs> <laughs> For, I, for a while, um, me and one other person were rotating back and forth between treasurer and president, but I don't think she wants the presidency back. So, And with not having um, uh, our annual meetings for um, voting, our last meeting that we had, I brought up that we really needed to have, we had talked about having an annual meeting in August. Uh, because, you know, I'm definitely up for election. So is our treasurer. Our, and everyone there was like, you know, we'll just vote you in right now. I'm like, great. <laughs> I, so is there I, anyone that would be willing to step in and um, share it with you as a transitional time? We're actually having problems with membership in general. Um, this being a conservative area, uh, and we're seen as a liberal group, we're not getting the membership in that. And we've been doing all kinds of different activities, is advertising. Um, the treasurer and I were on the radio a couple of weeks ago, trying to drum up interest. We've We've been doing everything we can think of to get some membership. Right now, our core membership is six people. Oh, and you know, there was all of our older people, all, um, mid seventies on up, they all dropped out through COVID. We have not seen a single one of them. We've had two meetings now in person and we've tried getting some of them, those people back and none of them are around. We don't even know what has happened to them. We can't contact them, their phone, they're not answering phones. Um, so yes, we're having major membership problems. Yeah, that makes it really tough. Well, if there's Thank things you. that the state office can do to help, please reach out and we can try to brainstorm together. Actually, I popped into this meeting hoping to hear ideas on how people are getting members. <laughs> I do have some ideas. Well, Arlene, Hi, Marty. I gained about 10 members last year. And one of the things we have been more involved in um, doing local studies, things that re relate more to local things. We had our city manager speak at our annual meeting. We've had um, much more visibility on Facebook, not to the league, even though we'd like, even though it is getting some visibility, but we'll post when we're having meetings on issues that, uh, are of interest to people on a site that a lot of people in Golden Valley look at. But if you can focus on the local stuff, it, it kind of gets you away from the national, you know, and polarization. We yeah. yeah, we do. I, we, had, um, we had our local chief of police come talk. That was a very interesting meeting. Our newspaper has been covering a lot of our meetings. We've had great meetings and great uh, coverage from our newspaper. Our, um, just, Thursday night, we had a local historian come in and talk to us. Uh, it's Brainerd sesquicentennial this August. As so, you know, we're trying to tie things in and keep things relevant. Uh, we had our local, um, the, our county a administrator come talk to us about how voting went, and the and she's a voting nerd. She's does the best meeting and so we're getting a lot of news coverage but we're not none of this is turning into membership we get people who go oh yeah we should join but none of it's turning into membership yeah the, uh what about we have a farmer's market in our city and we have I'm a doing table. that <laughs> you're doing all the right things and and then it's actually the ask where you actually directly ask um, i do everyone okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably bugging people. I know. I felt the same way. Our, our league almost folded in 2006. They were looking to uh, just fold up as a local league. And um, we felt strongly that, you know, we still wanted to hold candidates forums. And so I was kind of forced to then become president just to kind of hold this organization that would only hold candidate forums and we wouldn't do anything else. Well, obviously now it's changed a lot and we've, you know, we're up to 40 members, but we were down to 1920. It was not yeah. good. Oh, I wish we had 1920. Yeah. It, it actually did. Well, we probably have, we may have almost 20 paying members, but we don't have 20 active members. Oh, we didn't either. We had about five active members. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, it crossed our minds to, you know, close the fold the chapter, but well, not only the candidate forums, but we feel that a lot of our monthly programs are very interesting and there isn't anybody in the area doing anything like that. And nobody else talked to our chief of police after George Floyd to find out what uh, the police policies are around here. Nobody else had, well, we even had Steve Simon pop into one of our, um, it was lovely having Zoom where you can have you know, people from all over. Our, nobody else is doing this stuff. So yes, we'd really, you know, we put that aside. We're just going to keep trying to get members. You're doing an important service in your in Brainerd area. I mean, what you're doing is providing something that no one else is, and that's really important. Becky, Amber, yes. Amber, were you trying to raise your hand? Yeah. So I do have a couple of suggestions, or what's worked for us is um, the first thing that we did when we started getting members is we started the Kids Vote program. And so um, as we got out in the community and we're in the schools and we were looking for volunteers to help, you know, run the elections for the students, we picked up really a lot of members when we started with that program. Um, and then the other time when we really gained a lot of members was when we did advocate for ranked choice voting. Um, so we were down to, uh, to a very small number of members as well. And I think now we're back, back up to in the 40s. Of course, like you guys, we still have our core group of board members that do most everything. Um, one other interesting thing to note is that um, I think most, a good number of our new members will join online first. Mm -hmm. um, at, so if you guys have a we way for people it. to join online, yeah, We're that has been really, Good. really helpful, I think. But um, so those were the two things that we did that, that seemed to get us new members. Okay. All right. And Glenda, you have your hand raised. Uh, Becky, do you have a local library? We do. We have been successful in partnering with our local library and um, setting up periodically setting up voter registration tables. Mm -hmm. And they have been very cooperative with that because that, that's usually the, the crossroads of any smaller community. And yes, you get a lot of people coming and going and we took that opportunity to distribute some of our brochures and which which includes the registration for our chapter. Mm -hmm. And it just uh, getting the information out like that with people coming in and out of the library is, is, uh, has been effective for us too. And also we do have a, and Chaska has an indivisible chapter. Many of the, and they're very active. And many of those people have signed on with our, with our league. A local league too. And I don't know that's, you talked about the conservative community viewing the league as being more liberal. Uh, that's true. And it's, uh, it has, it has its, um, well, what we do is we, we do advocate for civil rights and human rights and uh, social justice. And if that's liberal, then I guess that's what yes. we are. <laughs> and, you know, if, if others can't accept that, you cannot make them accept it. But I think in attracting as many of those who are interested in those topics as possible, 
uh, getting your face faces out. And I realize it's a small group and it's hard to <laughs> hard to rotate when you have them, you know. <laughs> but that's what that's one of the ideas. And then we get into some local um, put up we put voter registration like in the local county fair. We had a booth up there for several years and uh, local um, other uh, local ce celebration events. And we got interested, a civics teacher in the high school became interested in uh, helping us re register seniors. Mm -hmm. And he has since become very active and is now a city council member as well as just kind of taking over the registration of seniors in our local high school. And we do get out into the other high schools too and set up voter registration tables in the spring to get those who will be read, um, 18 in the following or on or before the following. Right. But that, that's just some, uh, it sounds like you're doing so much, I know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, our area went pretty much 70% Trump. So we're very, it's very conservative up here. And we are not, one of the nice things about being able to partner with the chamber up here is the chamber is viewed, they're nonpartisan also, but they're viewed as being conservative. So they like partnering with us. So they, they look fair and we look fair that way. You know, yeah. <laughs> when we were going to back out of one of the candidate forums, the chamber was like, no, we don't want you to back out. We need you on there for balance. And But yes, it's that's part of it. Um, I'm also surprised how few of our local politicians will not join. On our last membership drive, I emailed all of them too. It's like, you know, we put these candidate forums together for you. Oh, you guys should join. Nothing. <laughs> No, no, yeah. they won't. No, we're going to have to come up with strategies to combat that, or or to be, or to try to get over that hurdle because you're not alone in that. There's other districts around the state that that has also been occurring in. Well, you know, we're in Gazelka's area. <laughs> yeah. Poor pity you. I know. <laughs> or could you get Gazelka as a speaker? We have had him come in as a speaker. He's been very open. And I was just thinking about uh, maybe asking him to come in again. Him and Carrie Rood came in and talked to us a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was also thinking about maybe getting Pete Stauber to pop in. Um, you uh, just said your local paper is very active. Perhaps mm -hmm. they could advertise them to the public, that the public would be welcome to come into these events where you they have. Know, yep, they already do for us. They really are good about that. If you know them well enough, Becky, and have had them come in as speakers, I wonder if just having a frank conversation, and maybe you've already done this, to say, you know, we've noticed so many candidates are not participating. From your perspective, what could we do? to increase our participation in our candidate forums? Why, why is it that you decide to stay away? Oh, well, they're actually participating in our candidate forums. Oh, we I thought that's what you no, said. No, no, they won't join the league. Oh. <laughs> we I, have I, very, I don't care if they show up at meetings, but I would like them to be paying members. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and you know, we put these together and yes, um, in fact, uh, Dale Look, who is our, one of our local reps, um, state representatives, he's been a member for years, but none of our city council people, none of them will join. And it's like, come on guys, we put this together for you. You should support yeah. us. <laughs> Sometimes it can be challenging to have elected officials as members anyway, because then there's allegiances get tested or requested too. So okay. yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, but they've, most of them, or some of them have been members on and off and both on the Republican side and the Democrat side. And right now we are all Republican for representatives and Senate up here. So if any of them join, they're all Republicans. And other than we've, um, Josh Heitzman, I don't know if you know that name, but he's one of the few that we have trouble getting to show up and it's not just us the chamber is having trouble with him too he just does not want to do anything he says that his words get twisted and he does not want to do anything public he did come on our last one but he's not happy well we'll have to continue coming up with strategies uh to 
to deal with that. Gretchen, I know we're going to lose you in a couple minutes to something Probably else. Me too. Is there anything? Who said me too? Probably me too. Okay. Yeah. Um, who, is there anything else, Gretchen, that you wanted to uh, ask or comment on before you take? I on? thought it was a good convention. You know, I really missed being together with people, but um, being able to spend all morning in my PJs here and do everything I did was pretty cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for all your hard work. Gretchen, can you hear a little bit how your league has grown to 80? Yeah. Um, well, so after the 2016 election, when Indivisible started growing, we got lots of people who were in both organizations starting to join, you know, bring their friends in to join league. And through that, then we added a number of DFL leaders. And so when people look at us, they recognize our members from other events and it's hard for us to continue looking nonpartisan because we have people that are very partisan and so we have turned bluer and bluer as time grows. Um, we do have uh, Representative Tinglestad, if you guys remember her, Kathy Tinglestad, she was one of the uh, Republicans that voted against Palenti and over helped overturn the veto, it was transportation bill and also Senator Abler, they're both, you know, kind of centrist Republicans, and they're both members of our league. But the more um, conservative Republicans in our area don't join her. They do come to our, our um, events. At least they did. And we'll see if they do again. We, uh, we got into a fight with Senator Michelle Benson. Whenever um, the state league did that letter, the um, decrying the people that didn't, didn't support the, the truth about January 6th. We sent that also to our local papers and to our local legislators and Senator Benson got very hostile over that. And so we'll see if she comes to any more of our events. But there you go. Thank you. Uh, other issues or concerns at the local level that you think would benefit from a group mindset? Or mind think. Zoe? Yeah. Hi, ladies. I'm just so honored and impressed with all of the hard work you do. And I don't know how your families feel about your presidencies, but as a new president, my family is a little concerned about the overextension <laughs> of time and energy and effort. And so he was listening to you while I've been here at work. Uh, it occurs to me that this is a this is a statewide effort. So even if you're in your own community feeling underappreciated and overwhelmed and not exactly supported, uh, especially as the last commenter spoke about her state rep really taking a negative tone towards the league as a result of the letter, uh, I would just encourage everyone to to, to remember that this is. This is a statewide organization. And uh, you, those of you who feel very isolated uh, in your own communities, uh, you can lean on the rest of us to, to help uplift you and, and strategize how to make connections possible. Uh, I'm extremely grateful that there's a state league that is as strong as it is. I didn't always live in Minnesota. And that's a huge benefit, I think, to our organization. Uh, and I will now check out another customer. So I <laughs> that's a really great point to make that we are all here to support each other and help do this work together. And now Zoe probably can't hear me, but as a new president, she should know that there's a monthly president's call too, um, to participate in or to listen to the recording if you can't be part of it, at least afterwards to hear what was said. And Marty, you're raising your hand. Yeah, I had one question, it was mentioned, um, before Grace left, she was talking about that, um, you know, it, that the league was going to set up kind of an umbrella for the concept of local leagues all having a website, and it would be through an umbrella organization of the League of Women Voters of Minnesota, so that if you, you know, that it was going to be a help for us to, to start a website. We don't have one, and I didn't know whether that is on the back burner now or is it something that is going it to be is a little bit too nice of a day is my guess yeah. uh, we, we, we sometimes reach that where we have a she's talking to her customer in oh, the bookstore yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um i 
I have to be honest, Marty, that I don't know where that is at and I'm not, I, but uh, I've made a note and I will try to find out um, uh, where we're at with that. And um, that'd be something that Kristen would be assisting local leagues with now. So we'll, we'll see, I'll see where we're at and kind of get that word out if there's something um, that's- if Some members complain that, you know, these younger ones don't have a checkbook. And so um, they want to know, can't you just, join online. So can a league like Golden Valley just say join online at Golden at LWVMN and then is there a process where we could get members to well I know through the database management tool I think that was part of how the, she was helping people set up their online uh, pay systems because we were doing that with Eastern Carver County too and it involved I think linking to a PayPal site. So that became our hurdle as a local league is uh, we don't have is how to set up PayPal for our local league. Um, but I don't want to speak out of turn either in case there's something else that's, uh, that's so cooking. So can people know. join your league through PayPal? That was can they? They yeah. cannot. Yeah, we never did get that oh, set okay. up. Okay. We set up a square store, which is very, very simple to set up. Uh, and then we linked the, uh, we linked our square store right to our Facebook page. And we also give out, when I, when we do our membership emails, I always have that link in there. I have it for, um, in every email that I send out basically. Okay. Thank you. That's one of the websites, uh, builders that I was looking at. Um, for our league, thank you. This is Deb. We set up a website using Weebly and that, um, that website is free. And then um, we pay like $20 every couple of years for our domain name. And mm -hmm. then for our online purchasing, there is a widget called Give Butter, which is free. And then that connects to Stripe and that does the credit card processing. And so Stripe is um, cost the same amount as, as Square or anything else. It's like 3% um, okay, of so the transaction plus 30 cents or something like that. So there is a small cost to doing these online transactions, but I think most people will do it. We had Venmo set up for a little while before we were before I, I we knew that we weren't supposed to, and that actually worked really really well. But I've since um, discontinued that. I wish well, I that was back again. Well, I can't. I can't we can't do, do Venmo. Yeah. Well, Venmo Venmo won't support um, organizations. They had an organization. Um, beta version out for a little while, but we didn't get on that. It's supposed to be just peer to peer, just mm -hmm. individual to individual. So, but that was working really well for a little while. All right, so it's a Venmo reason why we can't do it, not a, a league reason or a social reason. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. I was told by Michelle because I'd signed up for the mini database um, workshop and Michelle said, uh, but I didn't know if I should be at the president one. She said, well, if, do you know what a mini database is? I said, no. She said, well, then you should be at the president's one. <laughs> she said that the mini database is for people who know what it is. <laughs> oh, I forgot that was also going on right now too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yes, I think through mini, the mini database, there is a way to set up uh, online payment, but as I previously said, I believe that's through setting up a PayPal account first. Okay. So for our league, that proved too big of a hurdle at this time. All right. Square is really simple. They walk you through it. Um, they walk you through setting up a store and then you just have the link and that you can put in anywhere. Or, even most non-technical people can handle that one. Can it hold the storage like when we videotape programs we've had? Can you upload? No, no. This it's strictly a um, a payment. Yeah, a payment. You know, so we and you know, well, you can put events on there that you want people to pay for things like that. But yeah, it's strictly a payment site. Yeah. Right. For everything else, 
you need something else. Uh, it does sound like developing a website continues to be an area of um, need for a lot of local leagues. So I've made a note to pass that on and have a discussion about where we're at with staff and, and what that might look like going forward. Because I think you're representative of a fair amount of leagues that are still trying to figure out how to have their own website. What with you know, the, the uh, cycles of volunteers that we have coming in and out and who, who runs that and how does it work, so. I mean, there is one league who has the best website, but it costs them a couple, couple thousand a year, so. Who's that, Marty? League of Women Voters, Edina. Okay, oh. um, yeah, really, once you get a, a site set up, it doesn't cost you much at all. You can get storage for a year for um, about between four and eight dollars a month. Okay. Um, so I don't know what they're spending that kind of money on if they're paying somebody to do regular updates. They're, they're paying somebody who's created the whole site. Right. That's, that's the expensive way. It's not. Yeah, you know, that yeah. is definitely the expensive way because once you have the basic site set up and you pay for that store, it actually, um, if I ever get around to finishing our site, I was going to store it on the server that we use for our business site and you would be able to know, you wouldn't know that it's there. Uh, and so it was just going to be free. I, I just haven't had time to finish the site, but um, that's a lot of money for, to keep up a site. It really shouldn't cost that much. If you can get, I don't know, somebody's kid to whip up a simple yeah. site for you. <laughs> and I think part of that was donated because I think it was one of the, you know, members or something. Yeah. <laughs> donated their services. Yeah, Weebly is free. So, and what we, I got it eventually, initially all kind of all set up. And then our voter editor has done a good job at maintaining it. So a lot of times when she'll put something on the voter, she'll also put it on the website and she'll also put it on Facebook so that we kind of have consistent information all three places. So it's not hard um, to, to update it once once you kind of get it set up. It shouldn't be, um, that's what you want. You want it easy so that um, pretty much anyone can update it. Thank I you. mean, we've had problems. I mean, there was one time when, you know, things got really goofed up, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> we learned. Yeah. Um, all right, I think I'm going to uh, start wrapping, but what I want to do is I'd like to close with everybody saying what they are most excited about. Oh, Vivian is just wanting to come in. <laughs> I'll let her in. What you are most excited about in the coming year for your league. And it doesn't, it, it can be anything. It can even be seeing each other in person again. My, Marty, do you want to start? Um, I'm hoping that we will be able to have an outdoor um, gathering for our new members and our older members who want to be there too and do an orientation for the new online handbook. So we'll have to have it sometime, what, after August 15th or so um, when it will all be on, on online. So it will be nice to do those things of welcoming the new members. We haven't done that in years. So, uh, and to have a little bit of a party outside. Sounds good. Glenda, what are you most excited about with League in the next year? An outdoor together meeting. Uh, I think we're going to have some kind of outside meeting in August. I'm looking forward to that and hoping that you can be there. <laughs> I'm planning on it. I think I might give you a big hug. Would that be okay? I'd love it. <laughs> It's just been way too long since I had any hugs. I know. I'm the old curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Deb, how about you? I'm most excited about just getting out in the community again. I think um, as to it, we need that inspiration, I think, in order to stay energized. And, um, and I, so I'm, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Great, thanks. Becky? In-person meetings. What else is there to be excited about, right? Oh. <laughs> I am getting, really just getting some of the kinks out that uh, um, have developed over the last year and getting back into a regular rhythm. We've been out of our regular rhythms for a long time now. Amen to that. And Zoe, are you with us or with 
customers. I'm going to assume that's with customers. Well, thanks everybody for joining this group today. It was really nice to see you all. Um, for those that took part in the convention, thanks for uh, being part of that as well. And uh, hope to see more of you and maybe even in person in the next uh, few weeks and months. So thanks for all the work that you do for League. And um, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me or to the state office if you need some uh, support or have some questions about things. Thank you so, for continuing to be Thank present. you, Laura. Yep. Have a great afternoon. Bye -bye. Thank you.